So once we have unboxed the Odyssey G5 from Samsung to just test out and see how it works on the PlayStation 5. Now this is a 1440p 144Hz monitor and it does have HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.2. Now we know the limitations of HDMI 2.0 compared to 2.1 and that it won't be able to do 4K at 120Hz but it should be able to do at the lower resolution a higher refresh rate. Now out of the box when we look at the settings it's only outputting at 1080p at 60 hertz and looking at the settings overall trying to make adjustments there was there's really not much of an option to change that now you can set up in the display settings free sync and that'll help out with some of the smoothness it also tells you um, faster response time you can also adjust some of the refresh rate but when it comes to out-of-the-box settings it is limited just because the display was released before the PlayStation 5 so there is a firmware update to kind of fix this but I'm playing around with some of the resolution settings the display settings as well just to see if there's anything that can be adjusted to make the 1440p and 4k be acceptable for the PlayStation 5 out of the box so users don't have to do the update but overall playing around with it I'm not finding much information everything is automatic and was I did not have any luck and it does have HDR but the HDR itself on the monitor is not going to be very comparable to a 4K TV. I think you'll get much of a better experience, more brightness. I think this is HDR 400, so it's limited in overall how bright it will can get in certain scenarios. And some of the options that you have here is changing the refresh rate from 60, 120, and 144. But again, the limitations themselves until PlayStation enables native 1440p, which at this point they don't have that set up or any talks about it, it's not available. Now, if you want to make it work where it tricks the display, you will need to do a firmware update. You will need to go to the Samsung site, look up the monitor and find the firmware, put it on a USB stick and plug it into the back of the device. Once you do that, it will upload the latest firmware, which was released December 23rd to 2020. And you'll see here, going through the process of just getting that firmware installed, I would say oh, it takes about five minutes, maybe a little bit less, to get the firmware updated. And once you get the firmware updated, you will also have to do some manual changes just to make it work. And I'll discuss a little bit more on the features that you can enable and can't to make it work at 1440. As it comes to the Samsung monitors, the G5, the G7, they are compatible with the new up update and it does accept this trick. MSI did the same thing. There's a couple of other ones. There's some websites out there with the information regarding all of the monitors that can do this. 
if you have one already at hand that you have purchased you can go ahead and just update the firmware and once you do that it will give you that option that you're looking at and that is until sony hopefully enables native 1440p at 120 hertz as they did with the playstation pro And we're almost done with the firmware update. So once the firmware updates, it will restart, which is really quick. And at this point, you would think that it might already have gone through the process and now you should have it working the way you want it to but it's not you do have to do a couple of other things and as you can see me just messing around trying to figure it out it's going to make it much easier for you if you're just going through it the first time since some of the videos out there don't really specify how the users have been able to accomplish it But as you can see here, there's not much of an option to do many changes, especially when it comes to video settings. So if you have already turned it on, my recommendation would be to go through the process and reset all settings as I will do in a few moments. I first tried to restart the PlayStation just to see if the signal that it's sending and receiving, if anything resets on that part. So once it restarted, I went back into the display settings on the PlayStation. And I was still at 1080p at 60 hertz. So what I did is I reset the settings. Once I did that on the monitor, I was able to get the 4K to work. Now, the trick is that you can't have FreeSync on. If you have FreeSync on, it will disable the 4K and put it automatically back to 1080p settings. So you will have to turn off FreeSync. But it does allow you to make other changes You can set up a faster response time. You can enable 120 hertz. You can even enable 144 hertz. It will still stay on the 4K resolution on the PlayStation 5. And it will make you go through the HDR setup which again, as specified earlier, the HDR on the monitor is not the best. I believe it's, you can get a better value on a TV that's five, $600. I know it's more than the monitor itself, but with some of these features, if you're looking at the TCL six series, it has a lot of these same features and you can get it for around $600. 
that has uh, available refresh rate and 1440 hertz um, option at 1440p. And this is just testing overall how some of the games launch and if there's any issues where we see it not working. And so far it's launching so if we go to settings again just to make sure that it's sticking that nothing is randomly changing and we still have 4k now again the monitor will only display 2k even though it says 4k you're getting 2k max resolution the playstation 5 is sending 4k but it's getting compressed by the monitor and only doing 2k and how does it look it's when you compare it to 1080p it's going to be better but on a monitor this scale i would say you're better off going to 4k fully at 60 hertz or going with a tv and my recommendation for a gaming console is go with a tv just because right now there is very limited 2.1 HDMI monitors and there's mostly in the works maybe we'll see some in January and in 2021 but right now you're better off with the TV setup as they have way more options and a cheaper price point and as you can see here is Red Dead 2 just kind of playing real quick and the game itself just how the hdr is and the brightness and the color variations it's i've i've seen better if you're trying to get the full spectrum where it's bright and once you have ray tracing on that it's going to look vibrant but in this scenario my recommendations are still going to be either go with a TCL 6 series or a nano cell 85 or 90 or the Sony X900H and if you want the best of the best go with the C10 OLED from LG And here's just Spider-Man zipping through just to see the fluidity. And the monitor itself is fluid, no issues, no hiccups. The motion rate is good. But again, the same thing that I've gotten on a TV level. It'll be interesting to see next year what what better products are out there. So anybody looking at replacing your TV with a monitor for a gaming console, at this point, I would say wait or go with a TV, something like the NanoCell 49-inch from LG, which is the NanoCell 85. The NanoCell 90 comes in the 55-inch, and that one will be better. And then if you want the best of the best, go with the LG C10. That one's going to give you the best options with all of the um, HDR brightness and so on so stay tuned for more as we look at how the gaming experience is on the PlayStation 5 as new games come out and subscribe to the channel as we test other products